Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today we're going to make a back plate for this self-centering forejaw. I've always wanted a self-centering forejaw. I'm uh, going to make it inch and five-eighths thread because that's what my South Bend has. Kind of an oddball. Most lathes about that size are inch and a half. Anyway, we're going to do a couple other things to modify this chuck and let me show you what they are. Okay, here's the four jaw that we're going to, self-centering four jaw that we're going to put the backing plate on. And this is a three jaw. It's a different brand, but I suspect it came out of the same factory. Just a different name on it. It's made very much the same. I've made the backing plate for this already, obviously. Uh, but you'll notice a difference between the two, besides the four, obvious four jaw. It's the same body. I've measured everything, it's exactly the same except the center hole is different. This is an inch and a half. That's an inch and a half in diameter. And this is about an inch and an eighth. Well, that inch and a half is really handy. Uh, you will not find this chuck in inch and a half because I bored that out. So that's what we're going to do to this chuck today. Uh, I think I made a video on it. I'm not sure. Uh, some of the comments were like, I can't believe you bored that chuck out. Implying that it was dangerous. But I don't think so. There's a whole lot of casting there. I don't really think that we're in any kind of danger. My lathe, I don't, know, I don't remember what the top speed is, 1100. It's not going to fly apart. Now if you have a lathe that runs 3000 RPM, you might not want to do this modification. So anyway, first thing we're going to do is make a backing plate. We're going to make it out of this chunk of steel here. It's got a couple of cuts in there. I got it free. And I, we're, we're going to turn it down with those cuts in there. And when I get it close to the finished size, I'm going to weld those up and then put it back in the lathe and, and finish it out. So that's the next step. We'll stick this in the lathe and face it off and get started boring it and cutting some threads. Okay, a couple of limitations here and requirements for a backing plate. Number one, you want to take full advantage of the threads. Now that's uh, almost an inch and an eighth, inch and a tenth actually. No, yeah, inch and a tenth. And my, our backing plate material is plenty deep. It's, it's an inch and a, about an inch and a quarter. After we finish it off, it may be a little less, but it's plenty deep. But we also want to... Keep this distance off. You don't want it sitting out here. You want it as close to the spindle as possible. So that's, that's another factor. But inside the chuck, there's not much room to put that backing plate inside. If you look inside, it's just maybe eighth of an inch. Now this this backing plate we're going to make has to fit inside that. has to have a ledge to fit inside that, but obviously I can't go very deep with it. First thing we got to do is put these external jaws in. I know that's too fast. See the ladder run it in back gear and that would take forever. It's gonna take quite a while anyway. Well, the new belt on my lathe is not slipping near as much. I don't think it's slipping at all. That's a lot bigger cut than I normally take on, on that diameter. I 
Doing pretty good. Doing really good. Okay, we want the total depth of this back plate to be one inch. And we're at an inch and a quarter, so we got a long ways to go. Okay, we got it down to just over an inch. So I gotta, we gotta turn down this waste off this extra steel right here. And we're working on the back side right here. So that's what we're gonna do now. And I guess I'll make it about that diameter. It's really not critical. 2.7 is about right. Like I said, it's not critical. Okay, what we're going after here is just taking some extra stock off the back of the chuck like this right here. But we got to have now an eighth inch of this will go in the back of the chuck. So if we're going to make it the same as this one, which this one worked out good, that's, that's exactly a half inch. So we need to be one eighth inch. Well, total thickness needs to be five eighths. So. We got another eighth of an inch to take off. Okay, that's not quite far enough. I need to go up about another sixteenth of an inch, but I'm gonna weld these cracks up. I'm gonna weld these cracks up and then put it back in the lathe and turn it down some more. True it all up. Okay, you'll notice uh, right here there's an unthreaded portion on the spindle. That's exactly inch and five eighths, but I'll measure it again. But we need to make an unthreaded portion inside the plate uh, before we cut the threads to match that. There's some that say this is extremely critical and others say it doesn't matter at all. I, I tend to believe that it doesn't really matter. The exact diameter just needs to be a clearance. That's 1.624. So we'll go for uh, 1.625 and uh, it'll be good. A threaded chuck mount self centers. Uh, that's my theory anyway. I've never had any problem with them being repeatable. Yeah, it looks all right. Got a little porosity, but from that weld, it won't hurt. Okay, we need to bore this to 1.4 1.48 and that that is the 100 percent thread diameter internal thread diameter for inch and five eighths it, it probably needs to be about 70 percent thread 75 percent but i'd rather start out a little small okay i'm going to make one pass and then measure it see where we need to go
Okay, I set my caliper for 1.48 and then hit the zero. Now I can measure it and it'll tell me how much further I have to go to get to the correct size. So I need to go 466 thousandths or half of that amount. Four seventy. Let's go four seventy and we'll double check it again. So half of four seventy is two thirty five. I need to go two thirty five. I'm gonna reset my dial and start doing it. Twenty thousandths at a time I believe. Yeah. That's about right. Okay, I'm just just slightly over, which is perfectly okay. So I'm going to chamfer the edge. Well, actually, I'm going to bore that out to one and five eighths now. But this is just for that unthreaded portion on the spindle. So I just need to go maybe three sixteenths deep. Okay, I was going to make that uh, 1.625 and I'm about 1.627 and that'll be okay. Uh, I'm going to chamfer that edge just a little bit. Okay, I've got the tip of my threading tool set where it's just about touching the, it is touching now. And I've got my cross slide set to zero, the dial reset to zero. And all my gearing set for eight threads per inch should be ready to go. Now because it's eight threads per inch, I can throw my dial in, threading dial in on any mark because it's an even number. Here we go. Oh, just a little bit tight.
Oh, that's it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now, I can actually take the chuck off. And put my uh, other tool back in here. Clean up my welds and the outer perimeter and then cut the uh, part that insets into the chuck. Cleaning up that weld first. Notice I left the thickness of the plate a little bit extra thick so that I can clean this up after I mounted it on the spindle without hitting the spindle itself. By doing this, that plate is absolutely true to the spindle. Yeah, that'll work out good. Got a little divot there from the weld. Some, most of that will go away. We've got to cut a ledge on there for the chuck to fit on now. Okay, I've measured this center here, this recess where the plate has to go into, and it's 3.733. And the outside of this 4.988 uh, 627 thousandths down from the outer edge Five hundred. okay there's 600 thousand Okay, I'm feeling it now on the edge of that little radius there. Right now I'm going one thousandths on the dial each time, which is two thousandths in diameter. Oh, I believe that's perfect. Ideal is snug. I think don't make a move and, and get a little bit more off of there and it'll be perfect. Couldn't ask for any better. Taking down the outer diameter to match the chuck. Okay, now we've got to drill three holes in here, equally spaced, to mount the chuck to. A couple of years ago, I made this uh, gear indexer. It's got an expanding arbor, and I've got got it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four. The red red dots are spacing of three. Of course, it's 48 tooths, so there's a lot of combinations there. But I got the more common ones marked. To use this, you just 
tighten it like that. It expands like a concrete anchor. I got a video on this if, if you want to look it up. I'll put the link down below. And I got this bolts on to the uh, bearing cap. Of course, depending on your lathe, you may not have the, may not be able to do it the same way, but works out pretty good. And I got an indexing pin right here. All right, here's a uh, another thing I made a while back. It's a tool post drill. Okay, the position around is easy with the indexer. We're just putting some oil on this. Uh, but getting it positioned between that flange and the edge is another story. And it looks like on the chuck, let me get the chuck. These holes are actually positioned slightly toward the center. So it's going to be kind of a guessing game. If they don't line up right, I'll enlarge them a little bit and it'll be just fine because the register is really what's holding everything. Of course, we want the tool post close to it because there's some slop in this. There's just bushings. The closer the tool post is, the less deflection you're going to have. So, Okay, I've got the indexer on one red dot. So we're ready to go. I'm guessing that's about right. Okay. Now I'm going to move it two red dots. One, two. It should be exactly one third. And then two more. One, two. Okay, I've got the eighth inch in there. I'm just going to drill a hole through. Then I'll go to five sixteen. deburring the hole there. It's a four inch vise but it opens up to five inch which is really nice. And then you go 320. Okay the telling moment. Is it going to line up? I put this on there just before I drilled the holes and it looked pretty good. Just before I did the counter bores rather. Looks lined up. A little bit tight. Well, they look lined up. I'm going to drill them out just a little bit.
Here we go. Successful. Well, I don't see any wobble. That's a good sign. I like it. Okay, next step. Take the jaws out and bore that out. Now this is a, a learned from the other chuck and I'll show you what I mean after I get these jaws out. Okay, right there, that hole right there is the end of that. which is not a problem. It was a blind hole, now it's a through hole where I bored this larger. But right here, there's a little slot. See that little slot? That is what's holding that plate on in there. I think it's aluminum in this one. It's plastic in the other chuck. But basically what I did is I drilled where I bored it and then bored halfway through the screws that hold that back plate on. If I ever take this chuck apart, I'm going to have a hard time. Uh, but I took a chance and learned. But what we're going to do is measure how far I can go down without interfering with that uh, pivot point there. And that's more than enough for the screws. I'm going to go down 1.3. Okay, I've set my boring bar insert on the face of the chuck there. And I've set my stop right here uh, 1.3 inches away from the carriage. So when I go, I'll stop there and that'll be the depth I want to go to. So now it's just a matter of boring it out. Yeah, it's about eight or ten thousandths out. To be honest with you, I wasn't really optimistic about it being a lot better. Let's see what the body of the truck looks like. If I can get it out far enough. Yeah, that indicator is hard to see in the camera. The body of the chuck's only moving about, about two thousandths. So, well, that'll be handy. I bought this chuck primarily for my wood lathe, but I'll probably use it in the metal lathe too when I'm drilling uh, square stock. I want to drill a bunch of holes in square stock. Pretty handy for that. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. I like it. I like it.